I'm Jay Holbin with Filmmaker in a Box, and welcome to FIB Online. Today we're going to talk about the HD SLR, a camera that has revolutionized the independent world and the professional world as well. Before we get into specifics, we're going to talk a little bit about exactly what an HD SLR is. And to start with that, we're going to back up a little bit and we're going to talk about what an SLR is. SLR stands for Single Lens Reflex, and what that means is that when we are looking through the viewfinder of the camera, we are actually looking out the picture-taking lens of the camera. This was different from parallax cameras in which they were a second viewfinder next to the lens and what you were looking at was an approximation of what you were seeing through the actual picture-taking lens. In an SLR, what's happening is that there's a mirror in the camera behind the actual lens. This mirror bounces the image coming through the lens up to a prism and out the viewfinder. This allows the operator to actually be able to see out the physical lens in order to take a picture. This means you're actually seeing what you're taking the picture of. And it's also why when you're shooting with an SLR, when you take a photo, it suddenly goes black for a second because what happens is that mirror flips up in order to expose the film behind it. A DSLR means digital single lens reflex. And the difference there is that we are now, instead of using 35 millimeter film, we have moved it to a digital sensor. It's the same idea. We still have the picture taking lens here. Behind the picture taking lens there is a mirror. The mirror bounces the light through the prism here so that you can see in the viewfinder. Now what gets a little complex here is that with digital cameras we're looking at a digital image and it's also displayed on the digital screen, the LCD screen back here. This does not require a mirror. This is looking at exactly what you're seeing on the sensor. Some of the point-and-shoot cameras that you have, some of the inexpensive cameras, allow you to see through the picture-taking lens, but they're not an SLR. So what is the real difference between SLR and a point-and-shoot or a non-SLR? You have an interchangeable lens. This means that I can take this lens off and use pretty much any other lens that I want. I can use primes, I can use zooms, long lenses, short lenses, I can even use lenses of different manufacturers for made for different cameras, depending upon the type of adapter mount that's available. Then we come to HD SLRs. Now the HD stands for High Definition Video. So what we have is a digital single lens reflex camera that's also capable of shooting high definition video. Now this was not intended for filmmakers initially. As a matter of fact, it was intended for photojournalists. And what happened was that the Associated Press and camera manufacturers wanted photojournalists out in the field shooting war still photography or shooting news still photography to also be able to capture video, to capture the news at that moment. So Nikon was one of the first to incorporate this and they incorporated HD2, which is 1280 by 720 video, into their D90 DSLR camera. This was in 2008. This didn't really take off with filmmakers yet, it was a little bit below what we're, look we're used to in resolution wise, and it only shot at 30 frames per second. And it wasn't really until Canon followed suit with this very shortly after, also in 2008, and announced the Canon EOS 5D Mark II. The Mark II shot 1920 by 1080 video at 30 frames per second. And suddenly it caught the interest of independent filmmakers and it caught the interest of professional filmmakers. Because we had a camera that had a large sensor in it that was capable of shooting 1920 by 1080 video and was incredibly inexpensive. Further updates allowed it to shoot 24 frames per second, so now suddenly we had a camera capable of shooting 24 frames per second with a large sensor at an inexpensive price, and a whole new revolution started. Now there are some problems. It's not the end-all be-all. First of all, the form factor. These cameras were meant to be a still camera. They were meant to momentarily compose an image and shoot. They weren't necessarily meant to follow action or to change focus with moving action. This becomes one of the substantial problems with the HDSLR cameras, especially if you're using DSLR lenses. These lenses were not designed for motion picture use at all. Changing focus with a moving subject with these lenses is incredibly difficult to do. Judging focus on this little teeny screen is incredibly difficult to do. So, there's a bit of a compromise there. Now, some manufacturers are making lenses for these cameras in a cinema style, which makes them a little bit easier. But you also have to look at this camera and realize that holding a camera like this for a long take is a little bit of a pain in the ass. 
As a matter of fact, it can get really kind of jumpy. I can't put this on my shoulder. I can't necessarily set it. it it's awkward. So it requires third-party hardware. There's also a compromise in the image. You're talking about a low bitrate format. Although Canon has one of the highest bit rates in their HDSLR cameras at a variable bit rate of about 40 megabits per second, you're looking primarily in the 25 to 40 megabits per second. That's substantially low, and it's a compromised image. You're also looking at a color disseminated image in a 420 format. Now I'll explain more about what these mean later on, but in general what that's meaning is that when you take it into color correction in post, if you try to vary that image too much, it's going to fall apart. You're going to start to see the compromises of the more inexpensive format. One of the other limitations in some of these cameras is the record time. In most of the Canon cameras, you can only record a maximum of 12 minutes at a time. This is up until the 5D Mark III, and now you can record a maximum of 29 minutes and 59 seconds at a time. Now that might seem like a lot, but if you're shooting a documentary interview, that can be a liability. You have to stop the subject and then start a new clip. One of the other considerations in the HDSLRs is their dynamic range. This means the amount of information within the frame that you can have between black and white. The dynamic range or the latitude of HDSLRs is compromised, which means that if you're out shooting in a bright sunny day, you're going to have a lot more contrast in the image than you would with a professional grade camera. These are some of the compromises that you have to keep in mind when you're looking at an HDSLR, but when you're comparing a price point of a couple of hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars to tens of thousands of dollars, these compromises tend to not be so important. So there are some great benefits to HDSLR cameras. You have a large format sensor that's going to give you the emulated feel of motion picture film. You have an inexpensive high definition camera, interchangeable lenses to use a great wealth of Nikon, Canon, Sony, even some of the professional motion picture lenses are available for these cameras. But there are some compromises. The record time is a compromise. The bit rate is a compromise. The color dissemination or color integrity of the image is a compromise. These are things that you have to keep in mind. And the form factor is a compromise. Sometimes that's a benefit because you have a much smaller camera. You can tuck it in tighter spaces. Sometimes it's a problem. It's something you have to look at for your individual projects. We'll talk a little bit more about all of this in a segment on what's the best camera for you coming up on FIB Online. My name is Jay Holbin, and thanks for joining me.